Good evening once again everybody and welcome to the Bernard G. Johnson Coliseum on the campus of Sam Houston State University for tonight's contest between the Sam Houston State Bearcats and the St. Thomas Celts. Good evening once again everybody. My name is Jordan Smith. Alongside me, making his broadcasting debut, Mr. Colton Foster. Colton, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good, Jordan. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing I'm doing all right. Got, got a good contest here between two good programs, the Bearcats under new head coach Raven Justice, starting out 3-3 three and three on the year, uh, and one of the better starts that they've had in recent memory. Uh, and then, of course, St. Thomas uh, really having a decent start of their own, 2-3, and three, but... You know, really trying to pull a little bit of, of an upset today against Sam Houston. Kind of what are you looking for in this matchup between the two programs? Uh, I'm going to keep looking for that strong start from the Bearcats on the offensive side. Uh, you know, the last two home games, they've scored over 100 points apiece. And so I'm just looking for them to come out and play strong again and try to just keep putting up points and outscoring teams. Now, you mentioned the, the only two home games that the Bearcats have had. They've scored 100-plus points in each of those contests. That's the first time since the 78-70 or the 77-78 season where they have had multiple games in one season where they've scored 100 plus points. I mean, this is just, you know, if you're the Bearcats, this is the kind of start you wanted under this new regime. Oh yeah, definitely, you know, new head coach, new start. You have to start fresh with this new coach. Uh, last year, you know, we're only six games into the season, but they're averaging 75.3 points per game. It's already up from 68.6 on the year last year per game. So, you know, already starting to average more points, that's always a good sign. You know, the team looks like they're taking to the new head coach, and they look like they're just out there having fun playing good basketball. Now, you take a look at the other side in St. Thomas. Like I mentioned, 2-3 and three start on the season, uh, and really trying to, I guess, kind of keep the momentum going from last season, uh, or I guess try to rebound from last season, where the last season's matchup, Bearcats won 68-66 uh, in that matchup last year. St. Thomas trying to rebound, and grab a win back I mean kind of looking at some of their top performers the one person I keep seeing on their their top for each of their stats is Sheridan Hopkins I mean Sheridan you know 23.6 points 8.2 rebounds a game I mean she's just kind of everywhere for for St. Thomas you know kind of the nucleus of that team yeah it seems like the team is just wrapping around her she's leading you know those three those three or four stats to it's just a good good setup from the team, and hopefully she can lead them. Here's step off, and the Bearcats will get possession first to start this contest. Ramos with it on the left wing. Haynes with it inside. Here's the shot. No good. Shot by Cook. Ryan McGinnis to the right wing. Now gets it on over to Starks. She passes it on back to the top with reset things to Porter. Hayes with it, trying to conduct the offense. Five seconds on the play clock, and a travel will be called. So the Bearcats will get possession here off the quick turnover. Taking a look at the starting lineup for each of these contests, the Bearcats will start with Aramis, Maxwell, Haynes, Walker, and Cook. And of course, St. Thomas will start with McInnes, Starks, Hayes, as well as Porter and Hopkins. And as you see, Walker there getting the basket, first point of the contest for the Bearcats. Kicks it back to the top here on the elbow. Pump fake, now gonna go for a mid-range. That one in and out, shot by Hopkins. And now they're gonna call a jump ball here. Possession will go in favor of St. Thomas. Referee's making sure the clock is all right. Now it seems like we are good to go for that. Try to drive the lane. Good defense there in the interior for the Bearcats. Courtesy of Harrell and Walker. 
That will go out of bounds, and St. Thomas will keep possession. Tries to get it on the block. Pass just a little off on that one. That'll be another turnover, the second one of the contest so far for St. Thomas. That's one strong thing the Bearcats are doing this year, is they are having a good year forcing the turnovers. Yeah, they really are. That's something that they've improved on. 23.5 turnovers forced per game is definitely something that the Bearcats have improved on. And one of the reasons why they are 3-3 three and three on the season, here's a three. That one in and good. First three of the game made by Jalen Walker. The Bearcats go up 5 nothing early. And there's going to be a travel. A little late whistle. Kind of surprised. I almost thought they weren't going to call it, but travel called on Cindy Haynes. And that's another turnover. Walker will start the offense for the Bearcats. Get it on over to Harrell on the right wing. Here's the pick from Haynes. Now she'll shoot right from the elbow and not in. Rebound by St. Thomas. They'll try a fast break on their own. Hayes with it. And looks like a shooting foul is going to be called on Amber Leggett. That'll be her first of the contest. First free throw off on that one for Hayes. Free throw percentage for St. Thomas so far this season, 73.4%. It's the better of the two marks between both of these programs as the second one goes in. So St. Thomas has their first point on the board now, 5-1 the score. Now Ramos will conduct the offense here. Maxwell with it, she'll drive, kiss it off the glass and in. Maxwell. First few points of the game for Maxwell, 7-1 the score. A good defensive double team right there by the Bearcats. However, it does leave someone right open and they will get it. It's Hayes with it, Sydney Haynes. That's the first jump shot made of the contest for the Celts. Ramos swings it around to the corner, now goes inside, goes up and gets the and one on that one. The Bearcats forcing themselves inside offensively. And the and one, courtesy of Leggett, shall have a chance for a three-point play. That one good three-point play. The old-fashioned way and extends the lead here 10 to three early on in this contest. And I mean, hey, good dominating start here so far for the Bearcats. Yeah, it really is. You know, they're playing both sides of the ball very well. You know, you can only expect this from them. As of right now, you know, they've been playing lights out basketball. A little bit of a full court press here by the Bearcats defense. They try to get the pass down low, but that will go out of bounds. A little miscommunication there between a couple of the Celt players, and that will force another turnover. For St. Thomas, it's already four on the game here in the first three minutes of the contest. And if you want any shot of winning in the ball game, you cannot have that many turnovers. Yeah, and you know, you have to give credit to the Bearcat defense for that. You know, they're forcing all the turnovers like that. Especially, you know, just period, the way they're playing defense. Here's another three. That one off the mark. Offensive rebound. Miss. Another offensive rebound. Getting her own rebound. Another try, another try there. And this Maxwell. time it goes in. The third chance point there for Dominique Maxwell. And that will extend the lead to nine. Hopkins with it. Some good defense there shown by Leggett, and that will be a miss and a rebound by Haynes. Aramis will take it down the court and set up the offense for the Bearcats.
Leggett will take it in the lane, put it off the glass, and that one in. Once again, we're seeing it here now. A few, uh, a, a few good points here from the Rearcats being able to just drive the lane and really force the offense uh, to get in the interior and get some uh, good baskets and quick baskets. And now a turnover. Rearcats able to pick it up. Fast break here, two on two. And that one in. The and one once again for the Bearcats, courtesy Jalen Walker. She will have a chance to the three-point play here for Sam Houston. And that one just off the mark. That'll be the first foul called of the contest on Jalen Walker. That'll be the second team foul for the Bearcats so far in this contest. Swings it around, here's a three, and that one in and good for St. Thomas. Alexa Castillo. The first three-pointer made of the contest for the Celts. The Bearcats still lead by 10. Here's Aramis, make it a 12-point lead as Aramis just goes around the entire defense and is able to get it in for a quick and easy layup. And now a steal by Aramis. She'll take it down and lay wide open lane there to the basket, and she will get it. And now a timeout will be called by St. Thomas. 4.47 left to go in the first quarter play. 20 to six is the score. Dominating start here by the Bearcats. We'll be right back after this on the Bearcats Sports Network. Twenty to six, the score. Four forty-seven left to go in the first quarter of play between the Bearcats and the Celts. And Sam Houston State, Colton, off to a dominating start so far, defensively and really in the fast break as well, especially off turnovers, are uh, really able to get it done so far in this one. Yeah, they have. They've already forced six turnovers in the match, and I mean we're not even out of the first quarter yet, the first period. Excuse me. Yeah, it's definitely a good start so far. Uh, for the Bearcats, like you said, the six turnovers already here in the first quarter of play. And the rebound taken by the Bearcats driving down the lane now. Haynes got the rebound for Sam Houston. That's already her second rebound of the contest. Aramis will take it around the lane, and she will get it in for two. Four straight points here on two straight possessions for the Bearcats, courtesy of Jennifer Aramis. She is, she's really taking the team under control, and she's just leading the team to a you know a good start and a good good ball game. On the wing now is McGinnis for the Celts. It's a good defense there by Oramis. Gets it cross court to her teammate, and now Oramis gets the interception. The two on two fast break. Oramis will keep it herself. No good rebound will be made by Oramis, but they're going to say that her foot was on the line when she touched the ball, so St. Thomas will get possession. And that's another steal for Aramis. That's her second one on the night, 
that's just she's playing great defensive ball right now and just making making plays for the Bearcats. Yeah, two steals and six minutes of play as well as two assists. Uh, and of course, the six points off the three or four shootings so far. Doing a great job. There's another one for Jennifer. She'll pass it off to her teammate, and that is the first basket of the ball game for Alyssa Osborne. Makes it a 24 to six lead. You know, we've kind of seen this, especially in the home games, but we've kind of seen this uh, early on as the three is off and a rebound by Oramis. Really the dominating start here in the first 10 minutes of play uh, is really helped the Bearcats get that kind of early momentum that they've needed as the interior pass to Baxter is deflected and returned by St. Thomas. They go in the lane, almost lost it, and then falling as she's shooting. Didn't seem like she had much control. Bearcats will take it down the court. Osborne with it, tries to go up for a shot. They're going to say she's fouled on the shot, so two free throws coming up for Alyssa Osborne. Now Amber Leggett will check into the ball game for Lachey Haynes. Haynes so far, who's coming out of the contest now, in seven minutes is three rebounds. Not a bad way to start defensively for your team. No, three rebounds is definitely a good way to start for your team. You know, that's, that's extra possessions for you. They're going to say the foul is on the floor, and as they try to get the, the pass inbounds, it was stolen. Now deflected right back. And stolen by the Bearcats. Taking himself, and this time it will be a shooting foul. And that will send Leggett, the freshman, forward to the free throw line. First free throw in and good for Leggett. Take a look at the replay here. And yeah, clearly a foul got him right on the arm. That's what sent him to the free throw line. And now a two and two trip here. A good free throw trip here for the Bearcats. As it now makes them 75% on the day. 304 from the charity stripe and the three on that one. Off the mark there by Brisha Orange. Rebound by Oramis. There's over two minutes left to go here in the contest, and now looks like an offensive foul is going to be called on the Bearcats. That's going to be called on Baxter. That will be her first of the contest. Once again, that full court press from the Bearcats defense. Really trying to put the pressure early on. A pump fake, and then they go in for the layup. No good rebound by Baxter. And we'll get it on over to Osborne. What we can see here is this press by the Bearcats. It's really working. You know, they've caused so many turnovers already. And, you know, you just see them. They're feeding off it on both sides of the ball right now. Yeah, they really are. And here's a three for St. Thomas. Rebound for the Bearcats by Dominique Maxwell. But like you said, the, the full court press is really helping for some of the turnovers early on for St. Thomas and giving the Bearcats some extra opportunities to build what is now a 20 point lead. Going in for the layup, 22 now. 22 point lead for the Bearcats. Maxwell getting the layup in there. He said a 28 to six contest. A good strategy there for St. Thomas, just not able to keep the ball in their hands and lose it, forces, forces a turnover. And once again, that is now number nine on the contest here so far. Nine turnovers in the first nine minutes. That is not a good sign for St. Thomas early on. No, it really isn't. Uh, you know, they're going to have to definitely clean that up at the start of the second period. And definitely, and if they can't before halftime, at halftime, they're going to have to do some major adjustments. Deflection, they'll say, goes out of bounds off of the Bearcats. So the Celts will take possession here. I see a little bit more of a man defense being played here. Man to man by the Bearcats. It's Hayes with it right now at the top. She'll try to drive it in, kick it out. Here's a mid range jumper. And that one no good. Saved by her teammate on the rebound, Hopkins. 
They'll get the start over. And now looks like a foul will be called on the Bearcats. That's going to be on Osborne. That'll be her first of the contest and the team's fourth of the quarter. Going for the layup, and it looks like a shooting foul will be called on Leggett. That'll be her second and the team's fifth for the quarter, and so... It will be Sheridan Hopkins going to the free throw line for two for St. Thomas. First one in there for the Celts. Second one in and good. So it makes it a 28 to eight lead here for the Bearcats. With 33 seconds left to go here in the first quarter of play. 25 on the play clock, 18 on the shot clock. Aramis will kick it to the corner, pump fake. They'll now drive it into the lane. And that one in and good off the glass for Maswell. About 10 seconds now left before the end of the quarter. St. Thomas trying to break fast. Here's a mid-range jumper. That one a miss. Rebound for the Bearcats. And a double dribble will be called. A little bit of, a little confusion there on what they want to do with that one, but one second left. Yeah, you could tell she was confused. She wasn't sure if she wanted to take the shot or if not. Uh, you know, one second left, not much is going to happen, but we'll see a good play. St. Thomas will inbound underneath their own basket. Here's a corner three, and that one no good, and that will do it. For the first quarter of play, the Bearcats dominate here in the first 10 minutes of play. 30 to 8 the score. We're right back after this on the Bearcat Sports Network. Back here for the second quarter of play at the Bernard G. Johnson Coliseum. 30 to eight is the score as the Bearcats of St. Vista State lead the Celts of St. Thomas here. Jordan Smith alongside me, Colton Foster, bringing you the action as we start quarter number two here in this contest. Here's a baseline, they'll actually go inside. Pump fake, how about an eight footer? That one no good, rebound once again by Haynes. They'll pass it on off now. Aramis will take it and reset the play here for the offense at the top. Osborne with it now. Gets it on over to Maxwell, who swings it to the corner. Pump fake for Aramis. She'll now go in underneath. Miss rebound. The basket is good for Haynes. Will extend the lead here 32 to 8. You know, that just keeps adding on to the way the Bearcats have been playing this game. You know, they just keep keep dominating the game on both, in, both ends of the ball. Here's a mid-range jumper, and that one no good. Ball's loose, who's gonna get it? Rebound, St. Thomas. A reset play here, try to cut into this deficit. Almost lose the ball there, turn around and get the layup to go. 
Basket made there by Sheridan Hopkins. Osborne with it now on the right wing. Gets it on over to Maxwell. Back to the corner to Arama. She'll go for three. That one good. Nothing but net. Man, after 35-10 the score now. After that play, it's just it's so nice to see how well the Bearcats are passing the ball around on the offense and just making sure everybody gets their touches and make sure they don't take any contested shots. And if they find somebody open, they let them shoot. Bearcats are two for three from behind the three-point line to start this contest here so far. And that the first three-pointer attempted and made for Aramis. She now has nine points in the game, two rebounds, four assists, and three steals in 12 minutes of play so far. Aramis will pass it on off to the Walker who gets it inside. Here's Baxter with it. Goes and kisses it off the glass for two. And once again, like we mentioned in the first quarter, the Bearcats continuing to attack the lane and get those necessary baskets in the paint as that one will go out of bounds. And possession will stay with St. Thomas, it looks like. We had a late change of heart there from the referees. Yeah, you can definitely see how the Bearcats have built this lead up, you know, only taking three shots from behind the arc so far. I mean, they've taken 25 shots in field goal range. And, you know, it's just one of those, they're making smart decisions with the ball. Tried to drive the lane here, that one. No good, attempted by Brescia Orange. They'll get it, long pass to Ramos who gets it inside, no good on the layup by Haynes. And a steal on that one, a good steal by Walker. And she will get there for the layup. That was aggressive there by Walker. That's just, it seems like that's the Bearcat way right now. They're just playing aggressive basketball and they're dominating all the teams that they're playing at home. And it's just fun to watch. Thirty-nine, ten. the score here is the Celts will try to drive the lane. No good, has to save it before it goes out of bounds. It was Haynes with the rebound, but they're going to say her foot was on the out of bounds line before she was able to pass it off. And so St. Thomas will keep possession. On that play right there, you, you can tell the Celts are getting a little frustrated. You know, you have two players fighting for the ball. You can see the frustrating start, frustration start to set in for the Celts. A quick pass right on over to Aramis in the interception. She'll take it down the lane, and she will get the and one. Jennifer Aramis continuing, continuing her domination of the offense so far. She'll have a chance for a three-point play the old-fashioned way. Free throw in and good, so the three-point play the old-fashioned way will extend the lead 42-10. to 10. And so far, we've seen a pretty impressive game from Oramas here defensively and offensively as well. Yeah, she's definitely turned to an all-around player. The way she's playing in this game alone, shooting five from seven from the field, from the field, you know, one, one for one from behind the arc and one for one on free throws in her 13 minutes. It's just, and you can't even leave out her four steals. Miss three there for Oramis. Rebound will be made by Porter. Gets the ball before it goes out of bounds. They'll now try to drive the lane. They'll kick it to the corner. Here's a three for St. Thomas in that one. In and good, Alexa Castillo. That is her second three of the contest. That'll make it a 42 to 13 contest now. Ramos with it inside to Baxter. That one in and one. Had Baxter wide open there and just able to get around the defender as she's getting fouled and now is a chance for a three point play. And once again, you see the smart decisions by Ramos and the team period. I mean, everybody is just on the same page. They're all clicking, all making the right decisions, knowing where the ball needs to go and it's just leading to more, more and more points for the Bearcats.
Free throw goes in. That's her first made free throw of the contest for Baxter. And now makes a team five for six on the afternoon. 83% so far here in the first half. A good mark. And now a stoppage in play here. And a foul will be called on Walker. That'll be her second of the contest so far. And now Walker will be substituted out and in comes Alyssa Osborne. A little bit of confusion there on the play for the offense and the Bearcats able to get the rebound. Kind of reset things here as Aramis will get the play from head coach Raven Justice. Maxwell with it, looks to the corner, now driving the lane, goes for the layup, that one no good as it hit off the bottom of the backboard and Lydia Baxter able to fight for it and keep possession, that will be deflected out of bounds. And now Courtney Cook will return to the court here. Yeah, on that play, you can definitely see, you know, the grit the Bearcats have to keep possession of the ball. You can see them fighting for it. It's just, it's, I don't even know how to describe how they're playing right now. It's just fantastic. Five minutes left to go here in the first half of play between these two programs. And all we've seen from the tip-off is the Bearcats of Sam Houston State absolutely dominating so far in this one. And now looks like an offensive foul will be called here. And immediate timeout will be called here. 4.52 left to go in the first half of play. 45-13 the score. We're right back up to this on the Bearcats Sports Network. Four fifty-two left to go here in the first half of play. The Bearcats dominating here, forty-five to thirteen here on the Bearcat Sports Network as they take on the University of Saint Thomas Celts here in this early season non-conference matchup. And that one is going to be a foul called on Osborne. That'll be her second of the contest. Be the third personal foul this quarter for Sam Houston. That the pass is tipped by Aramis. And it's gonna go out of bounds, and the Celts will keep possession. After that play, you can really see, you know, defensively how, how the Bearcats are playing, running up, trying to capture the ball. You know, it's all eyes, all ball. Um, especially, you know, they've only given up five points in this entire second quarter. You know, the last field goal coming from the Celts being at the 618 mark. You know, that's almost been a full two minutes. And, you know, we're over halfway through the second quarter, and they've only scored twice. Trying to drive the lane, and it looks like the foul will be called on the floor. It's going to be called on Rachel Harrell. That'll be her first. Team's 
fourth of the quarter. Passing on off to the wing. They'll try to dry now. Kick it out. Here's a shot from mid-range, and that one kind of taking a little bit of paint from everywhere around the rim, but finally does fall in. That one by Eldridge. That'll be her first basket of the contest, and I'll make it 45-15. Pass inside, stolen by the Celts. Goes inside, a good inside pass for St. Thomas, and that one in. A little bit of a gap on that one for the, the Sam Houston defense. And that got them that pretty easy bu bucket on that one as they now get it to Aramis. Thought about shooting a three, but decided not to. Here's Harrell with it at the top now. Gets it to the corner to Maxwell. Back to Aramis at the top. Eight seconds on the shot clock inside. Goes for the layup, muscles up and gets it in. Courtney Cook with the basket. And that was just pure aggression on that one. Yeah, pure aggression right there. You know, you could also, it's the uh, Bearcats trying to get back on track. You know, they gave up two of the last three field goals. Um, they're just trying to, you know, get back in the mojo and return to how they've been playing this entire time. An offensive foul will be called on St. Thomas. Called on McInnes. That'll be her first foul of the contest. And that will be a turnover. The Bearcats will get possession here. Three minutes left to go in the first half. Maxwell with it to Harrell in the corner. Back to Maxwell. Gets it to Aramis. She'll reset the offense at the top. Harrell with it. Thought about shooting, but decided not to. Here's Maxwell from the corner. That one no good. Rebound made. Miss. Offensive rebound. Goes up. And will be fouled on the shot. Two free throws coming up for Lachey Haynes. Yeah, that's, you know, you can see the intensity there. She rebounded the ball twice and then draw the, draw the, drew the foul. Now she's at the line. It's just the way they're playing right now. It's lights out, and they're not taking, you know, anything from the other opposing team. First free throw. No good here for the Bearcats. As you take a look at the replay, it's a good work defense, or offensively down low trying to fight for you know their own rebounds we've seen that a few times early on in this contest so far as the second free throw no good them fighting for an offensive rebound uh, that's something that we've definitely seen improved from last year's team to this year yeah the offensive rebounds that's you know that's a major key to a win a steal here for Haynes she'll take it down the court now hand it off to Aramis to get things set up she'll give it to Harrell goes inside to Baxter Turnaround blocked out of her hands, gets it back, throws it up. No good rebound by St. Thomas. And now looks like, and I can call a foul on Harrell. That'll be her second of the contest. And I think Coach Justice is trying to wonder why that's not a foul or why that is called a foul because from her vantage point it looked like and from our vantage point it kind of looked like Harold was kind of stood up straight there as the first free throw in and good was just tr trying to set a screen here and as you see the replay kind of moving a little bit not really sure what the foul was about though yeah I don't I'm not quite sure either you know maybe it's just one of those we don't have the right we didn't have the same angle as the ref so we weren't you know, we didn't see the exact play as it happened. Second free throw, no good. It went out of bounds, and the Bearcats will get possession here. Zaramas hands it off to Harrell in the corner. Maxwell, she'll take it herself up and under, no good. Rebound by the Celts, and another foul on a fast break. Maxwell called for the foul, her first on the contest. Yeah. 
first free throw for Kalu is good. Osborne will now check into the game for the Bearcats. May have gotten him for a reach there a little bit on that on that one as you saw the replay. Second free throw in and good for the Celts. 47 to 20 the score now, 152 left to go. In the first half of play, Osborne with it in the corner now kicks it back up to Haynes at the top to Aramis in the corner. A little bit of a double team there. Haynes just not able to keep control of it as she goes out of bounds and a turnover for the Bearcats. Only their ninth of the half, uh, ninth turnover so far in the ball game. Yeah, they're playing very clean basketball, you know, minimizing the turnovers, especially on all the passes that they've been having. It's, you know, it's nice to see them pass the ball like that. They just keep, you know, they're playing unselfish basketball right now. Bearcats usually average 20.7 turnovers per game so far this season. You know, so kind of keeping in line with that, but it really hasn't affected them so far this season as they've been able to really stay within a good portion of these games that they have lost. Here's Aramis from three. That one no good from the corner. Rebound for the Celts. Now the double teamer. And I believe a timeout will be called on that one by the Celts. 117 left to go here in the second quarter. 47-20 the score. And kind of looking at really the second quarter and really the first half altogether so far, Colton. It's been really impressive to see from this Bearcat squad as you see Coach Justice talking to her team. Yeah, it has been. You know, you can definitely see, you know, they're just playing as a team. They all have faith in each other. You can see that, you know, the way they just pass the ball around, they keep passing it. They're making clean passes. They're not having to worry about any turnovers. The way they're just playing, they're playing lights out. They're not taking uh, silly shots. They're making sure that their shots are available and that they're non-contested. And if they are a little bit contested, they can find somebody that isn't. The Celts will inbound it here. It'll be Kalu with it. He'll get in and loose ball, able to retain it. Trying to drive the lane, not able to get it. And Aramis will get the steal. She'll take it down the lane. Try to get the layup, no good. Rebound here for Haynes. She'll put it up, no good. Maxwell with the rebound. Deflected out of bounds, and the Bearcats will keep possession. And once again, you see the offensive rebounds going. You know, that's two of them on that play alone. And then they it was forced out of bounds by the Celts, and now they retain this possession. Trying to throw it to the top, but wasn't expecting it was Maxwell. Goes for the layup. No good for St. Thomas. Loose ball. They'll keep possession here. Go for a three. And that one in and good for St. Thomas. Aaliyah Mortada with the three. Now Harrow will pump fake. And a foul will be called here. The foul will be called on Teresa Eldridge. That'll be her first of the contest. But enough to put them in the bonus to shoot two. First free throw good for Harrell. That's her first free throw on the contest. Six and nine now for the Bearcats so far in this one from the charity stripe. Seven and 10 now, 70% so far here in the first half from the free throw line with 42 seconds left to go here in the first half of play. Once again, you see the pressing defense for Sam Houston as another three is attempted, but no good for St. Thomas. Loose ball, Haynes with it. Max will give it to Aramis to set up the offense here. Shot clock is off, so the Bearcats can play here for the final shot. Harrell with it now. Cross court to Aramis, pump fakes. Looking for Harrell in the corner, wide open, but a deflection by St. Thomas. Three seconds left to go here in the first half. They'll shoot from midcourt, and that one falls short, and that is how we end the first half of play. The Bearcats, huge lead in this one, thanks to a great defensive start. 49-23 the score, and we'll be right back after this on the Bearcat Sports Network.
Welcome back to the Bernard G. Johnson Coliseum on the campus of Sam Houston State University for the start of the second half of play between the Sam Houston State Bearcats and the St. Thomas Celts. Jordan Smith here to my left, Colton Foster on the color commentary duties. And right away, we pick up where we left off the first half of the steal by the Bearcats. Yeah, you know, they went into halftime knowing what they needed to fix. You know, at the towards the end of the second quarter, they started to slip a little bit. But they look like they're ready to come back and just keep going as they started the game. Shot there for Dominique Maxwell right in front of the free throw line in and good. And like we said, just like the first half, starting off to a good offensive start. And now here's a steal by Walker, and she will lay it up 4-2. And a quick 4-0 start here for the Bearcats. In the second half of play. A tip and a steal. Once again, Walker, she'll launch it down the court. And here's Haynes kissing it off the glass for two. And that's a 6 nothing run to start the second half here by Sam Houston. Yeah, you definitely see them. They have not taken the, the pedal, the, their foot off the gas at all. They're just coming back. Just keep, keep pounding is what they're doing. Just keep scoring and keep it going. Now an offensive foul will be called on St. Thomas, I believe. That one will be called on Alexa Castillo. That'll be her second foul of the game so far. Once again, another turnover in the Bearcats. We'll get to continue to try to build on their 6-0 run. Here's a layup inside. A good interior pass there by Haynes to get it to Leggett, who got the basket for two. The tip pass there. Maxwell in the layup, and that one good assist by Jennifer Ramos. Timeout on the court, 10-0 scoring run to start this one. And this will take us to a media timeout. 8.20 left to go here in the third quarter. 59-23, we'll be right back after this on the Bearcat Sports Network. Back here out of the timeout, Bearcats leading this one 59-23. Jordan Smith, Colton Foster here with you. And Colton, as play resumes, kind of what have we seen from the first half so far? Or what did we see in the first half from the Bearcats? In the first half, you saw some dominating play on both sides of the ball. They were shooting, you know, they're shooting 33% from, oh, that's it. They're shooting 50% from, you know, the, the field goal. 33 behind the arc and 70% on the uh, on free throws. You know they forced. They've already forced 18 turnovers. 17 of them were in the first half, and you can just see dominating play by you know both sides of the ball, and they have not slowed down even at the start of the uh, at the start of the third quarter. The charge call made there, Leggett forcing the foul and a turnover. Bearcats get the ball back. Rachel Harrell now will come into the game for Leggett. 59-23 lead here. Every time that the Bearcats have played at home, which has only been twice so far to start this season, this is the first 
home game that they've had since November 19th when they defeated Wiley College 101 to 63. And you and I have been here for both of the home games. Uh, and we've seen that really this is the exact kind of play that we've seen from the Bearcats all season long when they're here at Johnson Coliseum. Yeah, I mean, that's two, two games that they're over 100 points. They're well on their way to making that possible again here today, this afternoon. You know, there's still a lot of game left. You never know what's going to happen. But the way they keep playing, I don't see a reason why they won't hit 100 for a third straight time at home today. Rebound made by Haynes on that one. She'll get it to Aramis, who gets it to Harrell. Pump fake. She'll try to drive the lane. Kick it out to Haynes. Haynes will power her way through and will be called on the shot. Two free throws coming up here for Haynes. After the foul made on that one by St. Thomas. Starks will get the call. Second foul of the contest for her. First free throw, no good from Haynes. Take a look at the replay here on the screen. I mean, questionable. I mean, Starks got her hand in there and a good, you know, good strategy to get the hand in the face of Haynes. Uh, but maybe a little contact around the elbow area. Uh, maybe what they got the call for. Not 100% sure. Yeah, I think what we're seeing, though, is a lot of the refs are calling some, some stuff that's just a tad bit closer than normal refs. Or not normal refs, but some refs would call. I just think there's some situations, you know, especially with this being this big of a deficit, they might try to, you know, help out the Celts just a tad bit. Rachel Harrell from three and shot that one from Huntsville High School. was way back behind the three-point line. And they now extend their lead to 30 or to 40 points, excuse me, here in the contest so far. 63-23 the score. Almost a steal there by Haynes. Goes in for the layup. No good. Rebound. I see Thomas goes up for the shot. No good. It's her own rebound. Does Hopkins. And now a foul will be called on Walker. That'll be Walker's third foul of the contest. And so Walker will come out of the contest. Osborne will check in. The five on the court right now, Baxter, Harrell, Maxwell, Aramis, and Osborne for the Bearcats. A pump fake. Now kicks out to the wing for three, and that one no good. Aramis gets her third rebound of the contest. To the corner to Osborne, back up to, uh, to Aramis, who gets it inside to Maxwell, gets it to Baxter. No good rebound on her own shot. And a foul will be called on the floor here. Foul will be called on Kalu. That'll be her first foul of the contest. Arrow will shoot for three. No good. Rebound by St. Thomas. Ball is loose. And they're going to say that the Bearcats didn't touch it before it went out of bounds, so Sam Houston will get possession here. Yeah, that's just another thing from the Bearcats, especially, you know, late in games. Just keep getting the ball, making opportunities for yourself to just keep scoring. You know, you're going to play some teams out there that are going to be able to match your scoring. And if you can, you know, outscore them, then there's no problem in winning, and you're going to win a lot of games that way. Baxter with the layup to extend the lead for the Bearcats. The Celts will swing it around. Hopkins with it now. She goes up for the layup. Now will be two free throws here as the foul will be called on Maxwell. That'll be her second foul of the contest. And Maxwell has really done a good job so far in today's contest. She's 6 for 10 shooting. She has 12 points. She has 5 rebounds, 3 assists, and a steal in 25 minutes. Uh, despite the two fouls, and including that second foul she just picked up as the first free throw in and good, Maxwell has had a, a pretty productive day so far for the Bearcats. Yeah, she has. I mean, she's definitely stepped up, and she's doing very well for the team. I don't think she's, you know, Aramis is doing better as she keeps, you know, the assist up and she keeps making steals and turnovers. But definitely Maxwell has been a big con contributor to this match. It's going 
It'll be Harrell with it. She'll get it to Osborne in the corner. Back to Aramis. to try to drive it in to Harrell. Corner three. And that one no good. Rebound by the Celts. Try to go fast break two on four situation here. Here's a one from the elbow. That one good for Hopkins. Hopkins now with eight points in the contest. The leading score on the court right now for the Celts. I went out of bounds. They're going to call a foul on the Bearcats, it looks like. Or excuse me, on the Celts, and that will take us to a media timeout. 4.30 left to go here in the third quarter of play. 65-27 the score. We'll be right back after this on the Bearcat Sports Network. Four thirty left to go here in the third quarter of play. The Bearcats at the free throw line to shoot to Alyssa Osborne. Right now the Bearcats lead sixty-five to twenty-seven. First free throw, no good. Osborne, this is her first trip to the free throw line so far in this contest. Second free throw, that one no good. Rebound by Baxter. She'll muscle up and get in there for two. So a successful trip there for the Bearcats as they get the basket and get back up by 40 points. Yeah, yeah, you say successful, but I don't think it was as successful as they were hoping. You know, they had to fight for the points rather than just get the free baskets. But at the end of the day, they still got the two points. And a good double team there and a steal by Lydia Baxter. She'll get it to Aramis. Take it down the court. She'll take it herself, kiss it off the glass, but no good. Rebound, it looks like a jump ball here. I believe they're gonna call jump ball here and so the Bearcats will get possession but now a couple of the referees are gonna talk it over with one another. Take a look at the replay here. I'd probably call that a jump ball, honestly. Yeah, that looked like a jump ball, but what I really see in that play right there is just two teams playing with high intensity. You know, both teams, Sam Houston's trying to keep their intensity in St. Thomas. They're just trying to get it back. You know, they've been struggling this entire game, so any little spark is going to help them out. And that could be something that helps them out even more. Alyssa Osborne with a mid-range baseline jumper. Extends the lead 69 to 27. Pump fake. He'll take it down, and that looks like Hopkins who will get the basket. Hopkins has been the top performer for St. Thomas so far, and in fact is now the only Celt in the lineup that has double digit points. Here's Osborne, mid range. No good, rebound 
on that one by Orange, and now they're going to call Baxter for a foul. That'll be her second of the contest in the third of the quarter on Sam Houston. Just under three minutes left to go here in the third quarter of play between the Bearcats and the Celts here in this non-conference matchup. A three-pointer, that one in and good for Hopkins. Bring it right back to Harold Pump fake. She'll drive it in just inside the free throw line. No good. And St. Thomas with a rebound. Hopkins will take it down the court. Two on one, fast break. And no good rebound by Cook. She'll get it to Aramis who takes it back down. Two on three, fast break. Aramis trying to get it, but it's blocked on the shot by Ariel Starks. Ball goes out of bounds and Bearcats will retain possession. Trying to find somebody to get it into. Finally finds Maxwell. Gets it back to Aramis at the top to reset things. Aramis keeps it herself. Gets it inside to Baxter. Muscles up. Gets the and one on that one. Lydia Baxter with the bucket. Will have a chance to get to the charity stripe. And get a three-point play the old-fashioned way. Substitution made on the court for, for St. Thomas, but Colton, I mean, that's something that I've really been impressed with so far in this contest is the way they've been able to fight inside as she gets a three-point play off the free throw. The way that they've been fighting inside to now build to this 40-point uh, lead once again. Yeah, they've been doing this all season. You know, they just keep, they just keep going. They don't give up. If they don't have the shot, they don't take it. If they do have the shot and can guarantee a foul, seems like they are taking that that chance and even if they are taking that chance they're still making it and so they're still getting the two points period corner three made by st thomas that one made by orange that's her first made free three pointer of the contest so far as she's now one for four from behind the three point line maxwell gets it inside that one's tipped and stolen by the Celts. fast break here for kalu no good rebound by Maxwell. She'll get it to Aramis who gets it down the court to Haynes and kisses it off the glass for two. You know, right now it just seems like this Bearcat offense with this, this five rotation that they have going right now, it just seems like they're all playing together and this could be a, like a potential starting lineup come, you know, conference play. That one no good as it now is deflected out of bounds and looks like the Bearcats will get possession here. They're going to say it bounced just off the fingertips of St. Thomas before it went out of bounds. But kind of going back to the point of attacking inside uh, on the offense and really holding strong on the defense as well in the paint as we're now under a minute left here in the third quarter. I mean, you've got to go back to the new coaching regime. Coach Justice and her staff really giving a little bit of a culture change here as Maxwell goes for three. That one in and good. Maxwell with the three-pointer, her first of the contest. And it makes it a 77 to 35 lead. They're gonna go for three now. Will St. Thomas, no good. Shot by Orange. Ball goes out of bounds. The Bearcats will get possession. Shot clock has been turned off, so the Bearcats will most likely play for the final shot here of the quarter. Inside the Baxter, a little long. Aramis fighting for a jump ball will be called. And St. Thomas will get possession. Two seconds, one second. And that will do it.
for the third quarter of play, the Bearcats continue to extend their lead 77 to 35. And when we come back after this, we'll have the final 10 minutes of play here on the Bearcat Sports Network. Back here on the Bearcat Sports Network, 77-35 the score as we begin the final 10 minutes of play here at Johnson Coliseum. Jordan Smith here alongside me, Colton Foster, bringing you the action here on the Bearcat Sports Network as this one is deflected out of bounds. Bearcats will retain possession. Jalen Walker step into the ball game now. Aramis will head to the bench. Just five on the court right now. It's going to be Osborne, Leggett, as well as Harrell. And that will be a Leggett basket there, as well as Cook on the court. And that will be your five here for the Bearcats to start this one. And going for the layup, no good. A little high on that shot there for Hopkins. Bearcats and Hopkins take it down the court. Walker with it now. Gets it to Harrell, who swings it back around. Here's Walker for three. That one in and good. Walker with the three to get it to 82 points here in the contest so far. Just a great continuation of play here. Haven't really lost momentum uh, for the Bearcats, and they've really just been able to keep their play going all game long. Yeah, they really have, you know, that was another great example of they're not taking, they're taking open shots and not forcing things. And it's just amazing to see how they've just adapted to this sort of play. You know, it looks like the new coach has come in and taught the whole live by the three, die by the three. And now, you know, they've only taken a handful of threes in this match. And, you know, they've made about half of them now. So the Celts will try to cut into this deficit. Here's a three to try to do so. They get the three to go. That one made by Starks. And for Starks, that's her first three made of the contest and her first basket of the contest. And now a foul will be called on Brianna Owens. That'll be her first of the contest for St. Thomas. Harold to the corner here. Tries to go inside to Cook, but the defense able to knock it out. Tries to go for the layup, does St. Thomas no good. Gets their own rebound, and now a foul will be called on the play. That'll be on Walker. That'll be her fourth of the contest. Once again, they will try for three. This time, no good. Walker with the rebound. She'll take it down the court herself. And it looks like a jump ball will be called. And so the possession error will go in favor of St. Thomas. Well, Ramos will now check back into the game as Walker heads to the bench.
It's going to be Orange or Owens with it here. She'll take a mid-range. No good as that falls short. Ramos will take it down the court, and now a foul will be called. A foul will be called on Brianna Owens. That'll be her second foul of the contest so far. That one deflected, almost stolen, but Bearcats able to keep it. Here's Harrow for three. No good on that one. A fight for it. And looks like they're gonna call a foul here on the Bearcats. That'll be on Amber Leggett. That'll be what looks to be her third of the contest. Here's a three for St. Thomas. That one no good. And that's going to be a foul on the floor here. And that's going to be the second straight foul now for Amber Leggett. Now up to four here. And now Lydia Baxter will check into the contest to take her out. Foul on that one by Cook. That's her third foul of the game. First free throw in and good for Ariel Starks. Second free throw in and good. Two for two on that trip. St. Thomas 10 to 12 on the afternoon. 83% from the charity stripe. Now just under seven minutes left to go. 82-40 the score here. Cook with the turnaround. No good. Baxter almost able to get to the rebound, but not able to control it. And that one goes out of bounds. You know, with the Bearcats playing right now, they just kind of, they got to get their head right. They seem like they're a little down in the down in the dumps, it seems like. Once they get ready to go, I just they need to get that one little spark, and they should be looking good again. Shot over the backboard. Looks like no foul will be caught on the play, and so that will be Bearcat basketball on the turnover there for the Celts. That is now turnover number 29. The contest, or excuse me, that's to be 28. Ramos pump fakes in the corner. Will go up and under, and that one in for an and one. Jennifer Ramos taking it herself, and she will now head to the free throw line for a three point play the old fashioned way. That one no good. Rebounds loose. Aramis will get the ball here. And they will reset the offense. Harrell with it. Gets it to Aramis. Here's a three. And that one no good. Rebound by Baxter. She'll muscle up. Try to go for it. No good. Rebound by St. Thomas. They will take it down the court. Orange with it here. Dumps it on off to her teammate in Hopkins. Hopkins turnaround shooter. No good. Rebound by Baxter. Baxter to Aramis. And with this 44-point lead, they may as well just take their time here. Try to eat up as much clock as possible. Harrow with it now, gets it to Baxter at the free throw line. Puts up the jumper, no good. Ball loose, rebound by St. Thomas. Behind steal there from Lydia Baxter. Harrow with it now, taking it down the court, one-on-one. -on -one. She'll go kiss it off the glass for two and extend the lead, 86 to 40.
And Thomas swinging around the, the arc here. They're going to try to go up and under. That one no good, but it looks like a shooting foul is going to be called on Lydia Baxter. That'll be her third of the contest. First free throw in and good there for St. Thomas. Hopkins will get the second one, two for two once again. She's now six of six on the afternoon from the charity stripe. And with just under five minutes left to go, the Bearcats still lead 86 to 42. Here's a three for Osborne. No good, loose ball. And that one out of bounds. On the Celts, Bearcats will get the ball. We take it to a media timeout. 4.49 left to go in the contest. And the Bearcats with a dominating lead here, 86-42. We'll be back after this on the Bearcats Sports Network. Four forty-nine left to go here in the contest between the Bearcats and the Celts here in this non-conference match of 86-42 the score here on the Bearcats Sports Network. Inside pass to Cook to Baxter. Lydia. In and one for Lydia Baxter. Gets the bucket to go. Will now head to the free throw line for a three-point opportunity. And then once again you see just the Bearcats offense passing the ball around. I mean they've just been doing it all day and it's just it's awesome to watch and just see how they're doing it and they're not turning it over while doing it which is a big plus and Thomas driving down the court here trying to get a little bit of a spark going here to end this ball game trying to end on a positive note and I'll go cross court with the pass here eight seconds on the shot clock Go for a long shot, no good. Aramis with a rebound, gets it cross court to Harrell. She'll take it down the court. Down to Osborne, up to Baxter from the free throw line. That one no good, Cook with the rebound. And they're gonna call a double dribble on that one. So the Bearcats will commit their 18th turnover of the contest. They're kind of looking at today's performance, Colton. Um, I mean, really, that's a great showing once again by the Bearcats dominating offense and defense and really being able to force turnovers, which is one of probably the big headlines uh, in this contest right now with them forcing 29 turnovers in the contest. Well, yeah, they're plus 11 on the turnovers. I mean, they forced 29 and they've only had 18. That's, that's going to win you a lot of ball games. And you know, and they're they're not just giving up. You know, they're getting the offensive rebounds to continue possessions, and they just keep keep driving to the basket to get the easy points, even if they are contested and they are finding the open person. Courtney Cook there with the layup. 90 to 42 now is the score here in this one. 
Continuing to dominate on the glass are the Bearcats. Six seconds on the shot clock. They have to get a shot off. Three seconds now. They will get it off in time. No shot clock violation as it does hit the rim, but no good. Rebound by the Bearcats. Aramis taking it down the court. She'll now back up and set up the offense. It's it on over to Harrell in the far corner. Baseline shot, that one no good. Rebound by the Celts. It'll be Orange taking it down the court. Two on one, fast break. And she will kiss it off the glass for two. Aramis will get it to Osborne. Swing it on around to Harrell who get it back to Aramis. Baseline shot. That one no good. And a rebound by St. Thomas. Ball loose. And they're going to call Lydia Baxter on the foul. That'll be her fourth of the game. That is one thing, though, that the Bearcats need to work on is they do have a lot of players with a lot of fouls. And, you know, you're not going to, if you start losing people due to them fouling out, you're going to be short on your roster. And, you know, they have just, I think they have four. Four players, at, no, they have two players, one player at three, one player at four, and two at two. You know, that's just one thing that you have to work on. You can't, can't keep fouling like they are. Yeah, 21 total fouls on the team. Three of them, like you mentioned, three of them with four personal fouls, that being Baxter, Leggett, and Walker. Uh, like you said, something that, especially later on, later on in the season and in conference play, you know, if – they end up picking one more foul up, you know, that, that gets them out of the game, and that's going to cost you, you know, down the run in a few games here and there. So you got to be able to, to limit those. And in conversations I've had with players and coaches, that's a big thing that they've said and that they've preached about improving off of every game is trying to not foul as much. As it looks like there will be a foul called on Haley Johnson. That'll be her first foul of the contest, but as Alyssa Osborne goes to the free throw line for two. This is, that's something that, like I said, the coaches and players have really preached on about improving, is improving on not fouling as much. Because like you said, it will cost them in games later on. Yeah, and you know, what's just the thing? You just have to work on it, it's chemistry. Sometimes you're gonna get a foul that's not really a foul, but you just have to work on it and you can't keep, you know, keep forcing them. And sometimes you just have to take the step back and not not play as tough and maybe you miss out on a couple of them but you might also give up a couple points turn over there off of the loose ball from the Bearcats 90 to 46 a score here with 144 left to go in this ball game Hayes with it, gets it on over to Eldridge. Eldridge on over to Kalu, who shoots, but airmails it. Triple team on Aramis, but still able to get it out to Baxter. Aramis will take it down the court. And that one poked from behind. Now a three-on-one fast break for the Celts. Baxter in the middle of it all, tries to pass inside. And that'll go out of bounds for a turnover. Osborne gets it to Aramis in the corner. Back to Osborne. Swings it around to Harrell. Now inside to Cook. Tries to get out to Harrell, but that one deflected. They'll go on a fast break here. Not able to hand handle it. As they go up for the shot, Bearcats recover. Get it on over to Baxter. 2 on 1 fast break. Baxter takes it herself. No good. Loose ball recovered by Aramis. And gets the 8-footer in 4-2. I want to steal by Oramis. She'll take it on the fast break and get the points. You know, as the as uh, the coach Raven Justice, she has to be looking at that play and say, "There's 30 seconds left, and my team is still fighting for the ball, even with this monstrous lead they have." 
and that's got to be a good feeling. That's going to pay off later down the line when you're in those tight matches and you need that special play. Shot no good, and that will do it. The Bearcats take the game 94 to 46, the final. They now go to four and three on the season. Thanks to a couple of players as well. Uh, really, Aramis getting the double double 18 points, 11 assists, six rebounds, and eight steals. Had herself a night, as well as Haynes getting seven points, 13 rebounds, two assists, and a steal as well. Those two players really doing a great job for the Bearcats. Yeah, they are Aramis. She's stepped up. You know, she played 38 minutes tonight. That's all, the two minutes shy of the full game. You know, she just accelerated on both sides of the ball. Whether it was offense, defense, she just kept driving. Even to the end. I mean, even with the 30 seconds left, she came up with the final steal. And that's definitely something you want out of your star player, especially just to keep going. Just to keep going. And it's just going to be one of those things that when you start getting into the end of the season, you need those players to step up and just lead the team on both ends of the ball, whether or not she's scoring or not, because if she's not scoring, then she can step it up on defense and give somebody else opportunities to score. Well, Colton, I hope you've enjoyed your, your debut broadcast. That's going to do it for us here on the Bearcat Sports Network. Once again, my name is Jordan Smith. Thank you, Colton Foster, for joining me behind the mic here for this one. Final score, the Bearcats take the victory, 94-46, to the final. For everyone here at the Bearcat Sports Network, this is Jordan Space saying good evening, good night, and eat them up, cats.